Hey, did you know that selling beats isn't the only way to make money as a producer? Wait, what? Really? Yup. In fact, there are multiple ways to generate revenue, and one of those ways is through selling sound packs. Hmm. Tell me more. You bet. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Sick Witted with Airbit, and today I want to talk to you about making money selling sound packs. Sound packs and sound design over the last few years have become a very vital tool in our community. Using these packs is a great way to collaborate with other producers, it sparks creativity, especially when dealing with beat blocks, and it has also become a great way for producers to support their independent business as an additional revenue source. So let's jump into it. There are several reasons why you should consider selling sound packs. First reason is, as mentioned before, you generate another stream of income. Traditionally, selling beats was the only way to make music, but as our community and technology grows, we are finding more innovative ways to collect on our craft and producers are making a killing selling their sounds. Second is you get more exposure. When selling sound packs on other third party sites, you broaden your network and over time, creatives will become familiar with you and your brand. Which leads to our third reason for selling packs. You have the opportunity to become an influencer or trusted expert in the field of sound design. Other creatives will eventually look to you for new innovative sounds as music evolves. And last, selling packs increases your chances for placements. The traditional way of getting placements is still a viable option, but producers like Frank Dukes have gotten innovative with their approach and sound designers are placing records without ever having to be in the studio with other producers or artists. Creatives are simply using the sound packs, placing the beats, and contacting the sound pack creators for clearance and sharing in the revenue. All right, now before we get started, it's important to understand who our target audience is. We immediately think that our main audience are producers, and they are. But also keep in mind that there are additional audiences that can benefit from using your sound packs. Another potential audience are content creators. Content creators often use sound effects or simple loops as background music beds to their videos to help tell their story and create a mood. They don't always use full songs because it can sometimes compete with the purpose of their video and would prefer simpler options. Another option for an audience are songwriters. Songwriters like to strike while the creative iron is hot, but sometimes don't have beats to write to and often don't need full beats. I know so many writers who write to unfinished beat ideas. Having your sound packs will allow them to put together simple beat concepts fast and easy so they can hammer out their song ideas. All right, bet. Now how do I get started? Well, there are generally two approaches you can take. First is the producer who focuses on sound design and spends most of their time creating theme and genre specific packs. In their spare time, they create loops they either add to those packs or they send them out to other producers to collaborate with. The other approach is the producer who still makes beats for placements but wants to tap into the sound pack selling game. Those producers often knock two birds out with one stone by taking the loops and sounds they create for their finished beats take the stems and put them into packs for other producers to purchase. Whatever your reason and whatever approach you decide to take, just know that there's room for all producers to try their hand at selling sound packs. But remember that you'll be respected for maintaining a high level of honesty and integrity by only using your individual creativity and or collaboration while creating sound packs. One of the biggest no-nos in this game is stealing sounds from other packs putting them into your packs, then reselling something that is not yours. Hey, quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get updated on cool new content like what you're watching right now. Also, join us on Discord. It's the perfect place for questions and conversation, not only with the Airbit team, but our entire community. All right, let's get back to it. There are typically two types of packs to consider here. Uh, the first is usually loop packs or sample packs. And the second one is just a sound pack. Let me break it down for you. 
Loot packs are usually packs with partially or fully created compositions that may or may not be stemmed out and can be used just like samples. Sound packs are generally packs with various one-shot type of sounds like snares, kicks, percussion sounds, sound effects, vocal chops, etc. And in some cases will have sample folders of loops as well. So, when identifying what type of pack you want to sell, it's important to know how many sounds are too many and how many are too little, depending on what type of pack it is. Now, this is pretty standard information, but feel free to design these packs however you want. Let's start off with loop packs. Loop packs typically have a minimum of 10 loops with various files, such as full composition files in both MP3 and WAV format, and sometimes have broken down stems in WAV format. Now let's move on to sound packs. Sound packs typically have a minimum of five sounds per category or folder, but no more than 10. You wanna make sure that your packs have enough sounds that'll provide value, but you don't want to overload the buyer with sounds so that you can keep them coming back for more. All right, now let's organize the folders in our sound pack. Now you wanna be organized and structure your sound pack folders in a manner that is easy for your customers to understand and doesn't slow down their workflow. Let me show you some ways and some examples of how these folders should look. Let's start with the loop pack. There are typically two folders in a loop pack, usually the composition folder and the stems folder. You can also add your artwork and we highly encourage to add agreements and contact information, especially if you're selling a non-royalty free pack. Let's start with the composition folder. You wanna make sure that each composition is properly titled along with the BPM and the key that it was made in. Now, let's move on to the stems folder. In the stems folder, you wanna make sure that each composition folder is titled, but within those folders, you wanna make sure that every file is properly titled. These files are typically all the instrument sounds broken down and you want your buyer to be able to know exactly what they're using. All right, now let's move on to sound packs. Here's an example of a sound pack. Now, this can vary depending on what type of sounds you're offering. General folders within a sound pack are snare folders, kick folders, 808s, hi-hats, percussions, sound effects, vocal chops, one shots, and sometimes loops. Now it's important that every file within your sound pack is properly titled. You want to make sure that the people who buy your sound packs know exactly what they're using. All right, now I don't want to skip over something that I briefly mentioned a little while ago, and that's the importance of artwork. Artwork is super important to your sound packs because it gives the branding and marketing feel of what you're trying to put out there. It's important because this helps you build a rapport and it helps you to be recognizable with the people who purchase your stuff. Over time, when they see your logo, your colors, your designs, they already know what they're in store for. You want to make this eye-catching as well because this is your first impression of your sound packs. People don't always get to listen to the sounds first, but they do get to see what it looks like. All right, so now that I've created my sound packs, how do I sell them? Great question. Now, if you're a DIY type of producer and want to sell these packs yourself, you can use your personal website accompanied with other websites like Shopify. Now, if you want to go big with the help of other platforms that already sell sound packs, you're more than welcome to. Just keep in mind, these sites may or may not take a commission from the packs that you sell. If you feel this is a route you want to go, be sure to check out sites like Splice, Kitsy, Modern Producers, Loop Masters, Drum Broker, and more. Most of these platforms have contact information on their site, but be mindful that some of these sites are highly curated to provide the best sounds for their customers and may not be so easy to be a part of. In some cases, you may not be providing the sounds they are looking for or the submission process may take a while as you are probably one of many producers trying to get access to their platform. Now, if for some reason you aren't having luck with the bigger third-party platforms, no need to worry because we here at Arabit provide a viable option for you as well. We have a powerful sound pack selling tool that is for everyone and doesn't require an approval process. Not only is it easy to upload your packs to our site, but we also provide sound pack agreements to protect your rights as a sound designer. We allow sounds and instrument tagging for increased visibility. We also offer multiple fully customizable store designs and we don't take a commission. So whatever you sell, you keep. 
Be sure to check out airbit.com for more information. And that's it. We want to make sure we provide our community with information that they need to build a better business and make money while living their dream as a creative. I hope this helps. Be sure to like and comment below and subscribe to our Airbit channel for more content. Also, don't forget to follow us on Discord so you can connect with our community and discuss all things music. You can find the link and others in the description. Until next time, stay creative. Peace.